What's going on everybody? Mike back today and today I'm going to do a build guide on my MFing Deadeye. So this is a character that I made back in I believe Synthesis League. Um, level 91. Basically I haven't leveled it since I played Synthesis back in 3.6. Um, I leveled it as a lightning arrow uh, cold conversion build. Um, it was a Pathfinder. And it did pretty good. Um, and then when I got it to standard, I converted it into a Magic Finder. So, this is going to be kind of going over just some generic MFing guidelines. Um, this is more of an old school build than what's out there now. Most people today are playing Lightning Arrow or uh, Ice Shot. And I'm playing Tornado Shot. Um, this build was inspired by a guy named Demi God King, or Demi. Um, he had a legacy MF Windripper build that had like 180, 160 something quant. It was all legacy gear. Basically, I took his idea and I've just been updating it every league with a new tree, um, and just kind of playing, playing around with it. So... Um, at the end, I am going to do two build or two map showcases. I'm going to run one without a headhunter, one with a headhunter, so you guys can kind of see the damage difference and the clear difference. So, let's get into it. Um, we'll start out with items. Um, so, we have a Windripper bow. This is like you, you need to have a Windripper if you're going to go MF as a Ranger. This is something that everybody's going to have. Um, this is not Legacy. Um... It's decent rolls. I think I paid... Actually, I don't even think I bought this one. Actually, I think I got this out of an Einhar, out of a Beast drop. Um, next, we have our helmet. Helmet is whatever. Some res, life, evasion. Um, if you can get the enchant for whatever skill you're using, even better. Um, I pulled this helmet off another build because it had some evasion. And it had some res. So, quiver, um, this quiver, now you can run a couple different quivers with this build. Um, I'm running a Rigwald's Quills with a Double Corrupt. I think I paid 3x for this in standard. Um, a regular Rigwald's would be fine. Uh, if you can't afford a Rigwald's or you don't want to grind out the cards, um, gets you a high res, either a Demise or the other one. I can't ever remember the name of it. And that'll just give you some life and some res on your quiver. Um, this is really nice because it gives you arrows fork. So it's just an extra clear speed um, on top of what we already gave. Um, next, let's get into some of the... We'll do our body armor next. So next, this is a body armor that I made a couple leaves ago. And I made this for my cast on crit um, Frostbolt Ice Nova Assassin build that I was playing at the time. It was evasion based, and I dropped this in a T16 map as a base. So it's I-85, and then I socketed it, linked it, and I essence spammed it for evasion rating. And then I uh, annulled off and slammed the crit chance. So it's tier 1 crit, tier 1 dex, and tier 3 crafted evasion with the elder region life mod. Um, realistically, if I was going to make this again, I would essence spam for evasion. But rather than going for the region life mod, I would go for the either a double crit mod, or so crit multi and crit chance. Or I would go for a better life roll. Um... This chest is like 2100 evasion. I, you could probably get upwards of 2500 evasion if you did it right. Um, so, let's get into some of the MFing gear. Um, I am wearing two white socket pariahs. Um, this one I corrupted into a white socket basically in, I think it was a Legion League. I bought a bunch of these. Um... And I just started valing them. This is before I figured out that you could use Veriti to white socket them. And I think I bought like 10 of these and I just valed them until I hit a white socket. 
And then I'm like, oh, wait, Verici's a thing. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna take this this one that I have left, and I'm gonna white socket it with Verici. And I actually, I ended up buying, I think at one point I had 10 white socket Pariahs, and when Leagues merged, I just sold them all in standard for like 2x each. So, I mean, it's 20x profit. Right now in League, I think these are, these were upwards of 3x for a white socket, and just the base is like an x and a half, so... Uh, a lot of people run Ventures Gambles. I don't I don't know. The Ventures will give you res, but it's such a pain to find a nice set of Ventures that I just went with Pariahs. Uh, next thing is, we, the next, I guess, four um, are really popular. So you have your Sedema's Touch. Um, this is like your go-to quant gloves. Everybody knows these. Everybody has these. Nothing really too special about them. I got a Max Rolled pair. Uh, I divine these myself. I think it took me like four divines to hit it. Uh, next we have a Bisco's Leash. Um, again, this is just Quant. Um, and it gives you rarity per Rampage, which is nice. It's give or take. You can run Bisco's. You can run a really nice Stygian Vise. You could run a Headhunter. You could run a Mage Blood. The belt's kind of whatever. Um, Boots, uh, running gold worms again for the quant, but you also get move speed on these and uh, quite a bit of fire res. So I was running actually, let me find, I was running these boots, which is more move speed, has a life roll, um, and reduced attribute requirements, which was nice before I had my, um, or. I was doing something... Oh, I was running in Empower on my Herald of Ice. So I was running these boots for the less attribute requirements. So I didn't have to have as much strength. Or, sorry, I didn't have to have as much uh, dex. The Amulet, I'm running a Biscos collar with... This is a Legacy Biscos. I bought this uh, last... I bought this in Blight League, actually. Well, when Blight League went to Standard, I had a bunch of currency saved up from farming Blighted Maps. And I bought this for, I think I paid 10x for this at the time. Not really knowing what I was doing. If I would have paid more attention, I'd have bought a double legacy roll. Um, you can see this one only has the quant legacy, and the rarity is not. So I wish I would have saved, either saved up and bought a double legacy, or, um, you know, paid more attention. Um, allocating essence sap, that's just for the mana leech. And then, uh, flasks, um, personally I like unique flash, flasks are really up to you, the only ones you're going to need, you, you want a dying sun just for the extra projectiles, it's nice. Um, I'm running a Blood of the Karui, actually a perfect Blood of the Karui. Uh, I think this is Legacy, uh, Rock Gut, uh, I don't know if it's Legacy, but that is a max level Rock Gut. Uh, it's Zero's Promise. I know this is Legacy. And this is nice because it gives us Fizz damage as Chaos and Elemental damage as Chaos. And then uh, Taste of Hate. Again, I like the way this Flash looks. And so, what, whatever. Uh, to me, Flash really don't matter. That being said, we are flam uh, slamming Flash more than a Pathfinder. So, I should probably have a little better Flash. Alright, so let's get on to the Skill Tree. Um, skill Tree is kind of... I guess you would say the same for most ranger builds esque. Um, the only difference is the ascendancy. Um, I went with Deadeye, as I said before. Um, I used to have this as a raider for the frenzy charge and the phasing, which was really nice. But with the nurse to raider, it, it I don't know, it, Deadeye seemed more clear speed. Um, I will say I did have a lot more defenses with a Raider. Because I was attacking faster plus the phasing help to keep you alive. So, Ascendancy, you're going to go for Far Shot straight off. Um, then you're going to take Inulus Munitions. And then you're going to take Ricochet. Um, finally, you're going to take Gathering Winds. Now, if I was going to level this build, I would actually take Ricochet first. And then Endless Munitions. I would go up this way instead of the way that I went. Because you're going to gain... Ricochet is going to help you clear so much faster. 
especially if you don't have a rig wall or any other fork, that ricochet with that chain is going to help you clear even faster. And then the gale, the gale force is just nice. Um, it gives you tailwind and just gives you more action speed. So, skill tree. Um, pathing up through charisma to get some mana reduced. Taking a jewel socket. I'll go over jewels in a minute. We're coming up. We're taking strength and int nodes here. Because as you can see, I need the strength and the int. Uh, we're coming down to Revenge of the Hunted for a little bit of suppression and move speed. Uh, we're coming over. We're going down to Intervate for, again, spell suppression and crit chance. Survivalist for the res. Heartseeker for the crit chance. Um, most critical... Well, ah, most crit builds are going to take Heartseeker. Coming down, we're grabbing another Jewel Socket. We're grabbing King of the Hill and Master Fletcher. Again, most of your um, bow builds are going to take these nodes. Coming down, we're grabbing Herbalism for life. We're grabbing Primeval Force for Elemental Res. Um, Essence Sap, again, I have that anointed. If not, I would just pass up to it. Actually, I probably would just take this Mana Leech node. Next, we're taking Lethality for uh, Projectile Attack Damage. Or, sorry, projectile crit multi and crit chance. Uh, a little more projectile speed. We're coming down here for life. Um, and then now this is where it gets kind of cool with Fangs of Frost. So, we're getting increased cold damage with attack skills. And we're gaining fringe and charges when we shatter an enemy. So, that works really well with our Herald of Ice. Because we're kind of always exploding corpses or shattering corpses. Uh, going up here for Int. Again, I needed Int. Otherwise, those points would be allocated somewhere else. Uh, jewel socket. So these jewels, these cluster jewels, they're kind of just whatever. Um, I didn't really put a lot of thought into these. But we have Cold Blade Killer. So it's cold damage over time. And we get a little bit of life when we kill a chilled enemy. Uh, Righteous Path. Um, that really does nothing. I think, honestly, I chaos spammed this, and that was just one of the nodes I got. Two jewel sockets, and we're taking disorderly display, which is just elemental damage, and we get blind nearby enemies when we use an elemental skill. Which, our tornado shot isn't actually counted as elemental, but our flame dash is. And I'll go over gem links in a second. So coming up here, um, if you have another cluster, you can put it here. Um... Going up, taking Blood Drinker, and then we're taking all of these Claw Nodes because I have a Lionized Fall. And what this does is it converts melee modifiers to bow mods. So all these really nice Claw modifiers are turned into bow modifiers for us. And then I'm taking one with Evil for the Chaos Res and the Elemental Res. If I was going to do this build again... Um, or some changes to this build is I would take out the int nodes here. I would get a little more int on my gear. And then I would have another jewel socket here. And I would re-roll the cluster jewels. So, jewels. Um, one of your jewels, you need to have gain onslaught on kill for four seconds. That's just going to help you clearing. It's going to give you more movement speed. Uh, the rest of them are either elemental damage, any type of elemental damage, fizz damage, or crit chance or crit multi uh freeze also works i should say freeze so i'll hover over my jewels so you can see uh corrupted blood um because i didn't take it on the tree um i have a corrupted blood jewel and then if you want to run an inspired learning with this build you can actually put an inspired learning here and you take the Fervor node, and that will give you your four nodes for Inspired Learning. So, Gym Links. Um, everything in the bow, we're kind of going to ignore. Um, I have, these are just leveling gems, so I have a Tornado Shot, or two Tornado Shots. Um, and I have a Hatred. I swapped out Hatred for Grace, just to see what it would do. Um, really, you can run either, I think. I don't really think there's really a much of a difference if you want to be more defensive or if you want more damage. 
Uh, cast on Death Portal, pretty simple. It's a very squishy build. We have 2300 life. You're going to die in maps. This just gives you a portal to come back to. You don't have to backtrack. I will say this portal will screw you, especially in Harbinger packs. If you die, you have a very hard time coming back from Harbinger packs. Uh, next, we got Herald of Ice with item rarity. So what this does is when you when you hit something with Herald of Ice, or when you when you explode something with Herald of Ice, it will give item rarity to that, and that stacks on top of our other Herald of or our other item rarity in our tornado shot. Uh, running a precision, this doesn't need to be a level 20. Um, I'm using it for the crit chance. Honestly, you could run a level 1 uh, just to get the accuracy rating, and then you could run a little higher uh, hatred or grace. Uh, I got an ice golem for the crit chance, and a flame dash, and then our main six link is going to be tornado shot, mirage archer, which just helps with clear speed and makes it a little more afk -able. Added cold damage, elemental damage with attacks, item rarity, and GMP. And I just flopped these gems, that's why they're all level 1. Um, you could actually swap your added cold damage to hypothermia if you want more of a, of a uh, safer build because hypothermia is going to let you freeze everything. Um, if you're running Ice Shot instead of Tornado Shot, I would definitely go with Hypothermia. Mirage Archer, uh, you could honestly take out your Mirage Archer if you didn't want to have that, and you could run Added Cold and Hypothermia both, so. That being said, that's kind of the build guide. Um, I'm going to do a couple quick maps here, so I'm going to run one with, um... I'm going to run one with a Biscos, I'm going to run one with a Headhunter, and let you guys kind of see the difference of the clear speed and kind of the overall feel of the build. So let's go ahead and put that there, we'll take these out, and let's go run them out. So, like I said, this this build is, it's not a Pathfinder, but you're, flat, you're smashing flasks like a Pathfinder. So that's something that you're kind of going to have to get used to with this build. It's just basically you're right-clicking, smashing flasks. You right-click, you smash your flasks. And you do get hit a lot. Um, you do take quite a bit of damage. And you're probably going to die in a lot of scenarios. Um, you're never really going to be bossing with this build. This build isn't made for bossing or really anything other than just really fast clear speed and you can see right here I'm probably gonna die just because I don't have the damage with my gems being flipped so we'll go ahead and swap that we'll pick up all of our stuff Um, I am not res capped with this build, so that's another big thing on why I'm taking so much damage, is just my reses are atrocious. But, is basically, as long as you can clear, as long as you can keep your flasks up, you can pretty much clear ahead of where you're walking, and that will keep you pretty safe. Now, this Harbinger pack, I'm probably not going to be able to do this Harbinger pack without a Headhunter. This is kind of a higher tier map. Hey, we did it. Hey, we dropped a... Uh... Is that a... Uh, I don't know what that is. I, why can't I think of the name of that? It's a carcass jack. And you can see I can kind of run along here for a little bit. And my Mirage Archer will still shoot stuff. Which is nice. Um, if I was going to do this build in League, I would definitely make it more tanky. Um, especially not having a Headhunter. 
you're going to want something that is that can stand up to the uh, hits a little better than this can. All right, so let's run a map here with a headhunter just so you guys can see the clear speed difference. Um, again, my gems are not leveled. I just flopped them, so the damage is a lot better than what I currently have. But you can see just by getting headhunter buffs, it's going to improve our clear speed by a lot. Again, we don't have a lot of single target, so that's why I'm not really going after uh, many of the bigger bosses. But you can see once I get, you know, three or four headhunter buffs, I can kind of just stand in place and let the buffs kill everything. And you do want to be flame dashing a lot with this build because of the blind that we have. Whenever we use an elemental skill, um, that is going to help quite a bit with just your survivability. Um, because it, it essentially it gives you a blind aura. And you can see there's the clear speed of the build. So, uh, I guess some t takeaways on this. Um, I'm going to say personally, I wouldn't run... Um, I wouldn't run the, the Grace. I think I'm going to go back to running the uh, Hatred. Just It seems like it gives me a little bit more damage. Um, I'm not really noticing a lot with survivability. So, that's something that I'll make sure I set up in Path of Building, along with the Path of Building page that will be in the description. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, let me know. Comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good day.